Hello. I don't even know if I'm live. How do I know if I'm live? <laughs> Hello, my name is Anna Thompson. My friends call me Dodi. I'm from Akwesasne, New York. Our reservation is part of Canada and the U.S. So, um, yes, yeah, so I am Mohawk, um, Turtle Clan. My Mohawk name is Ganoshuni, which means she is making the house long. Um, I was asked to give a demonstration on um, my work. Uh, I primarily bead. I like to work with leather and beads. I have been doing this for 26 years. I first started when I was pregnant with my daughter. I was making her a pair of moccasins. Um, so my daughter's 26 years old. And I've been doing it ever since and I have four children. So I have been doing all of their moccasins, their regalia, for ceremonies or powwows or whatever they wanted to participate in um, so over the years I got pretty good at doing some uh, beadwork and stuff so um, yeah so three years ago I made a pair of Iroquois style moccasins I took a class and I couldn't finish the class uh, the instructor fell ill and um, um, can, oh, I'm sorry, I got distracted by a, um, message on the phone. Sorry about that. So I think this is going well. Cat soup is watching. Give me a high five if everything is as it should be, or a thumbs up sign if you could, please. <laughs> okay, so um, so about three years ago, as I was saying, I started to make um, Iroquois style moccasins. In the middle of the instruction class, they got cut off, so I had to learn myself and put together my style, of mo my own style of moccasin, which I did. And let me show you a little bit about that. I'm going to do the flip here. So this is my workspace. I'm working on, this is the next pair of vamps that I'm going to bead. This is what you call the vamp after it's done right here. So this is what I do. I start with a piece of paper get my design on there, pick out my colors, and I start beading. But let me give you a little bit of look into my mess. Um, I just kind of threw this cover into the wall here. All the materials that I use, you know, a lot of beaters use the pellet up top. This second shelf right about here is all my velvets and the, a lot of Iroquois people use in their traditional clothing these days. Um, this cupboard, which is closed, is full of my leather, and then there's all these tools in here. I got dozens of scissors and shears and all kinds of goodies. I like I like to get all the things that I can to try and help me work. Um, so this is my mess. So um, after I get my vamps, then I'm gonna show you some of my beads. I have these trays full of beads. This is how I store them. I like to color code it, which always ends up being harder to keep organized than it is to put it, to keep it this way. But anyway, so um, yeah, so there's all my beads, all my scrap leathers, all the materials that I use. Um, so after I get something like this beaded, I'll turn it into something like this. And here is what goes next is I'll get a, my pattern out 
and I will cut these pieces. This is a, called a welt. It goes between here and here. It makes it look nicer and it's supposedly it's waterproof. So I'll cut this piece out. I'll cut this piece out. This one gets the extra double sole, gets glued on and sewn on. These are just my marks to kind of keep me in the right area. The That's just chalk, so it should come off eventually. Here is the tongue of the moccasin, and here is the cuff. So when I sew all of this together, it should come out looking like this. This is not quite done. I like to put some more pieces on here. This is the, I use felt for my liner. Here is a size eight. You can use whatever materials you want. I've used, um, there's a soft plush fleece. There's, this is felt. You can use shearling. I've made a pair of boots for my daughter before and that goes on the inside. Makes it nice and squishy soft. So after I sew this piece, like you can see the pieces as they relate to here, this, this is just this piece that's going on through here. And I cut it with some fancy scissors, scallop ones. And then after I get this done, I like to put in some more little just to dress it up a little bit, make it unique, put some edging on and stuff like that. So I've been doing moccasins, like I said, for three years. I made my first sale three years ago and I've been kind of trying to keep up and that people keep me busy and I truly appreciate it. I enjoy it and stuff like that. So it keeps me busy. Um, here's a little baby pair that I'm making for um, a little boy. Got some work left to do. This thing doesn't want to stay down, but I'll figure something out. So, but when I'm not making moccasins, I like to take the summer off and do things for myself because I do enjoy this. I will like get different ideas and stuff. So I just wanted to show you, um, this bag that I made. It's a tote bag. Um, it's on a brain tan smoked hide, which is, you know, my favorite thing to work with. They're hard to get. Um, they're expensive, but still my favorite. This is, uh, this is one of my favorite pieces. I was thinking about keeping it, but I like to, I like to see where my work ends up. I always feel like it ends up where it's supposed to be. Here's the back. It's just plain. My sturdy leather strap. I can start working with some nuts and bolts here. And I put a pretty liner in there if you can see it. And I made a few purses in the last few months, I guess, three or four. I also made this over the past winter. This is a pair of gauntlets, I think they're called. I just call them mittens because I like the work. This is um, muskrat, dyed muskrat, uh, all black. Just wanted to try something. So those are the different things that I can try and come up with. Um, so I've been teaching also some classes. I work with high school students for my, my um, everyday work. They're always, I have all the supplies to teach them how to make moccasins. So over the course of the year, I get to teach them just by going to school how to make some moccasins. But I also will do classes outside of school. And I've done mitten classes and I've done moccasin classes. And it's great to see people learn and when they get to finish, it's such a, such a nice, nice process for them to see them accomplish it. So that's all I have. Uh, show you real quick my workspace one more time and if you guys have any questions I'll turn it back to me so thank you for all your comments there um, 
I appreciate that. That looks, thank you. Um, hey, Logan, Miss Logan. <laughs> I just saw your first name. Um, yeah, so if there's any questions, I will be here for another minute and then I'll stop. Uh, how long does it take to complete a project? Well, that will depend. I can do moccasins, a pair of moccasins in three days, like three eight hour work days. If you, uh, if I work every single day for eight hours, <laughs> which it gets a little hard because the, the, kids I have a grandson and it, you can't just sit and do this for so long um, you got to give it a break and break it up so I, I figure about three days um, another question can I demonstrate the beading um, hmm, I don't really have anything out right now um, let me see there was a Holly question okay um, but it any other projects besides the moccasins, it will all depend. Um, the, the mittens here, the, they, it all depends on how much beadwork I want to put in, in it. I like, the reason I like beading is because once I get started, I can't stop until I finish. Uh, can you show how you start the sewing of your moccasins with the piece you slide in? The the Joyce Nanakok. Do you mean the liner? Um, so she asks from how do you start sewing the piece of your moccasin that you slide in? Hmm. I'm not, I don't really understand that question. Um, with the piece that you slide in or if it is the welt this piece so what i do is i take this i put the welt which is the pretty side to the pretty side and i put it to the pretty side here and i start at the top and i go down to the side this way and I make sure that this ends up here and the gathers I make sure they only land between here and here on this arch so the okay so she said yes the well so once again here this pretty the part that you want to see gets faced to face with the beadwork and when you quarter your pattern, there should be a mark at the middle at the top. And that's where you start. This needs to end up at the halfway mark. And I can find the halfway mark by folding it here, if that makes any sense. It's kind of hard to hold the phone and show at the same time. So when this ends up here, there's going to be some extra leather here. Those ones I gather from here to here. Sometimes it's four pleats, sometimes it's 10 pleats, and it just depends on the size of the, the well, I mean the vamp and the things that you put together. So, um, so I hope that answered your question. Um, another question is where do I sell my work? I, if you want any, if you want to, order any of my work just go to my facebook page dodi thompson um let me see if i have a card around i should i don't i don't have a website because i i'm busy i i i'm good with what i do here and stuff like that so this is super hard to see there's my email You can't even see my Facebook name on there. I'll just write it. Um, and usually if I have, when I make things that are for sale, I will post it on there. Or if I have anything available, they'll be on there. 
I don't usually go too much further than that because I am busy enough. So another question is, do I ever hold public classes for the general public? Um, Pre-COVID, yes, I did. I, I've been, I, w I wouldn't say it's for the general public. They were usually sponsored by a program or whatever for either women or in the community or whatever. Um, so, um, but I've been asked to, and I, I should probably get on that maybe once things settle down a little bit and find a different, um, way to teach it to the general public on my own. Um, and I think that is the all the questions so i'm gonna put my email on here because it was really hard to see on that card so dodie thompson is my facebook name that's how it's spelled you can usually tell because i usually have some kind of beadwork on there if there's other dodie thompson's but here's my email if you have any more questions or let my hotmail account age me K-A-N-A-T-I-R-E-S at hotmail.com. Um, yeah, so if there's no more questions, I'm going to say thank you to New York Indian Museum for the opportunity. And hopefully we can work in person. So thank you and bye.